Not many people can say that what they do every day helps to save and improve the lives of America's heroes. But the dedicated soldiers and civilians of the Natick Soldier Research, Development and Engineering Center can make that claim. As they develop numerous technologies, the people of NSRDEC can take pride in knowing that their work protects America's servicemen and women and provides them with a better quality of life when they deploy to harsh environments around the world to defend this nation's freedoms. My initial experience here was I was a bit overwhelmed by all the different work that Natick is doing here in the advancements of technology, especially in the way of load carriage and, uh, and kitting for the soldier. When I say kitting, what I'm only really talking about is some of the different items that a soldier wears uh, during combat mission. My experience is that there's a, a huge dedicated force of both civilian and military here, uh, and they're dedicated to trying to alleviate some of the, the hardships of the soldiers facing uh, downrange in combat. Don Lee helps to protect soldiers such as Adams through his work at Natick on helmet technologies. He's currently studying integrated systems that could one day produce a single helmet for mounted and dismounted soldiers and Marines. Soldiers and Marines face a variety of threats on the battlefield, and we do our best to try and protect them um, without inhibiting their ability to complete the mission on the battlefield. So we do the best we can to ba have a balance between what technology can give us and what the soldier is facing on the battlefield and be able to have them complete their mission. Uh, we're looking at optimizing what is put on the helmet and where it is put on the helmet. Uh, we're looking at those evolutionary type protection factors of ballistic protection and bump protection. Those are always going on. But now we're looking at adding increased protection to the helmet by looking at visors, ballistic visors, ballistic mandibles, um, communication systems. So currently the, the Army has two ground helmets that they issue, the advanced combat helmet and the combat vehicle crewman helmet. We believe in the ST community that you can potentially replace both those helmets with, with one helmet. One of the best ways to protect soldiers is to limit their exposure by keeping resupply convoys off the roads. NSRDEC works on technologies to accomplish that, from airdrop systems that make precise deliveries of supplies to remote combat outposts, to power producing photovoltaic cells, to systems that save fuel and water at those same base camps. Our soldiers today, they have to operate out of contingency bases in theater. And for those bases to operate, some of them consume tens of thousands of gallons of fuel every single day. And every time a fuel delivery is required, the soldier has to leave the protection of that base camp to go secure that truck. Also, if they have to open up the doors to that base camp to let that truck in, which leaves them vulnerable to the enemy. So anything that we can do to use technology to reduce that fuel consumption makes a warfighter safer and saves money. For example, if you put a solar shade over the shelter, you can significantly reduce the solar load on that shelter so you don't have as much of a cooling demand on that shelter. The same thing goes for thermal insulation. We're housing our soldiers in fabric tents, basically, and those are just inherently inefficient. During his deployment to Afghanistan as Command Sergeant Major of Bagram Airfield, Army Reservist David Sanborn got a first-hand look at the dramatic impact of the technologies researched and developed at Natick. Everything that I, I wore personally, uh, you, you would never know that you're actually wearing it. It's that comfortable, uh, including the boots, uh, both the, uh, the hot weather and the cold weather. Whether soldiers are on demanding combat patrols or inside the wire, products from Natick's Department of Defense Combat Feeding Directorate help sustain them. Nobody wants to eat cold food on the flight line or at their stations. Uh, so morale is directly related to food and the quality. Bottom line, if soldiers wear it, eat it, sleep under it, or have it airdropped to them in theater, it probably traces its beginnings to Natick. That history of support for service members stretches back to 1954 and has continued uninterrupted for more than six decades. I'm an infantryman, so I've pretty much done all the jobs from a young saw gunner all the way up to a platoon sergeant. Uh, anything to help lighten the load, to make it more comfortable in today's battlefield is going to be well received by the infantrymen. Developing technologies that contribute to soldier morale is in the hands of NSR deck workers, many of whom hold advanced degrees in disciplines from aerospace to zoology. They can also tap the vast intellectual resources available at New England's world-class technology companies and colleges and universities. 
I, I think what impressed me the most is the level of dedicated uh, scientist researchers, uh, those that can connect the expertise of what needs to be done in our military with the science behind it so that the right decisions are being made. The work done by those dedicated scientists and researchers results in innovations that eventually wind up in the hands of soldiers. Um, the soldiers out there, uh, they're wearing the gear. They, they don't really think about where it's coming from and who developed it. They look at it and they, they look at it from a standpoint of a user. The IOTV and how I could utilize that on my body uh, and I could personalize it by you know, putting my, uh, my nine mil in the front, on the side, uh, my uh, my combat medic kit, um, uh, all the gear that we were given to us, and this is this is what I was impressed impressed with the most is that the gear I received, I could I could go ahead and modify it to fit my needs. Natick's mission to provide the world's best equipment for today's soldier never ends. Body armor specifically designed for females promises better fit and unmatched protection at a time when the 360-degree battlefield has become increasingly gender neutral. When I first put it on, uh, the initial impression was that, I, and it just came out, this is what security feels like. And then I had the honor of being able to deploy with it in Afghanistan. And it is easy to put on, to take off, and more important, it gives you the confidence that you need in an environment that is hostile. I just think, for me as a female soldier, this is something that's just very exciting. You know, I think throughout most of my, my career, we've just been given stuff. We've been given generic stuff. And it's really great to see that stuff is being made, equipment is being fielded that's specifically made for me, for people my size, to help us accomplish our missions and, and, and be comfortable while doing it. Natix researchers rely on the valuable input and feedback of soldiers to produce state-of-the-art equipment. The Operational Forces Interface Group at NSRDEC goes into the field to collect that data. Uh, they dedicate a great deal of their time doing evaluations on different types of technologies, uh, getting feedback from soldiers, which helps steer the programs forward from there. Everything at Natick focuses on treating the soldier as a system in an effort to maximize survivability, sustainability, mobility, combat effectiveness, and field quality of life. The goal is to empower the world's most capable fighting force in whatever way possible. You know, when we look at um, the success that we've had on the battlefield for the last 12 years, I think it's because we had questions that were asked 15 to 20 years ago, research that was done here that drove the changes in personal protective equipment or practices. We need to continue to focus on that to ensure that we're ready for the next 10 to 15 years in the future. But I could not be more proud of the team that's here, the hard work and the expertise that we have. We're making a difference. Secretary of the Army John McHugh and Army Chief of Staff General Raymond Odierno both recognize Natick's unique role in Army research and development during visits here. But, but I can tell you the work that is done here is enduring. The work that is done here and the people that are here um, are absolutely essential to all the things that we do for our soldiers, the things that we do to keep them safe, to keep them comfortable. They, uh, what they do here is an incredibly important mission to the Army. As they continue to work, what I consider to be our center of gravity, which is helping our soldiers to do their job. Uh, that's something that will never change. The Army is about soldiers. It's about their ability to perform and conduct their missions. It's been incredibly eye-opening. It's been uh, an experience that I'll take with me for the rest of my military career and even afterwards. To see the dedication of the civilian force here, as well as the military force, that's dedicated to try to develop better equipment for our soldiers and help them in their everyday missions, as well as in the combat role. The soldiers and civilians of the Natick Soldier Research, Development, and Engineering Center never lose sight of their ultimate goal, to help America's warfighters accomplish their missions so that they may one day return home to the embrace of their loved ones.